Today's video is not sponsored. Good morning guys. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys enjoy this new little background that I'm working with right now. The Christmas tree is finally up, so I'm going to milk this new background for as long as I can. And real quickly before we jump into today's tutorial, I need to drink some coffee because I got up at seven o'clock in the morning just to film this for y'all. So, can you guys hear my voice cracking? I sound like that flute from Titanic. Speaking of Titanic, Jordan and I watched that movie like a week ago. Anyways, that theme song makes me bust up every single time. All right guys, so buckle up because today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this cute little baklava. Baklava? Baklava. I'm dead, it's a balaclava, excuse me. I honestly made this balaclava very last minute. I didn't think I was going to jump onto the trend. And then I just saw a couple of really cute photos on Instagram and some scrap yarn. And then I thought, you know what? I gotta make it. So I whipped together this cute little balaclava using some leftover scrap yarn that's been sitting on my shelf. And I think I got this done in about three to four hours. I keep holding this crochet hook as if it's like a wand a pointing stick but you know just bear with me but yeah now that i got this balaclava pattern the way that i like it i can show you guys how i made this in today's really quick and easy tutorial i'm just going to be using some random yarn that's from my shelf this is like a craft smart value jacquard yarn all right but to get started on this balaclava i'm just going to go ahead and grab my yarn and i'm just going to start off with a standard slip knot because for the very beginning of the balaclava, I do want to make a really cute and simple ribbed band all along the bottom. I don't know if you guys can tell. So to begin, I'm just gonna start off with a chain of eight. And now I'm gonna chain two extra for turning corners because I will be working with double crochet. So go ahead and place your hook into the third stitch from your hook, and then just place a total of eight double crochet along your chain. Nice and simple, nice and basic, y'all. Nothing crazy. All right, so I have my beginning row of eight double crochet, and at this point, I'm just going to work on the length of the collar. So from here on out, I'm pretty much just going to be doing front post double crochet stitches, and this is just going to help me get that ribbed band effect. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it. Okay, so I'm back, and as you guys can see, I have worked up about five or six rows with this front post double crochet, and that's what results in this really cute ribbed band effect. So pretty much at this point, I'm just gonna spend some time adding more rows of my front post double crochet until it is long enough to wrap around my entire neck nice and tight. Bruh. I literally just filmed for 10 minutes and I wasn't recording. The gabagool. All right, so I have finally finished up my cute little ribbed band here. I love how like the color alternates like that. She's beautiful already. But just to show you guys what I have, I worked up a total of 44 rows of those front post double crochets. And as you guys can see, it fits perfectly here around my neck. And I did double check that if this is attached, I can slide this, me and headbands, I can slide this over the top of my head to get it down to my neck. So 44 rows of the double crochet is perfect for me. And now at this point, I kind of just need to connect my ribbed band in the round. So kind of picking up where I've left off and I'm just going to slip stitch across the corresponding stitches right there, just so that we can physically join this into a round. Ugh, my camera's gonna die. But what I wanna show you guys is that I'm going to pick up both top loops in that first stitch in the row, and I'm also going to pick up both loops here on my other side of the rib band, and then just go ahead and slip stitch those together. All right, so like I just said, I did slip stitch the two short ends of the rib band together. So now at this point in the pattern, I can start working 
upwards on kind of like the neck portion and the back of the head and this part is completely up to you i think i'm only going to add a few rows of just plain double crochet in the round and that's kind of what i did with this balaclava so with this balaclava i think i'm only going to add like three or four rows of double crochet in the round so i'm just going to go ahead and start on that now kind of picking up where i've left off i'm always going to chain two because i'm still working with double crochet and at this point i'm kind of just going to find any open area that i can to place my hook in to get those double crochet there's not really an exact rhyme or reason to this i never really have a specific pattern on how I place my double crochet. But when it comes to working horizontally across a vertical type of ribbed piece like this, I really just kind of stretch my work apart just a little bit to find gaps. And then that is where I will place a double crochet. So again, I'm just kind of finding a nice open area to work these double crochet. They're pretty obvious. You shouldn't be able to miss any of these spots. I'm just going to continue this for the entire round. And don't forget that when you get to the end of your row, chain two and turn your work. We're always turning our work here, guys. I'm turning a new leaf, learning new tricks. And this is something that I'm going to bring with me into 2022. I'm always gonna turn at the end of my row. All right, so I've actually reached the end of my row right here. And I'm just going to slip stitch into that chain two at the beginning of my row. So now I'm officially working in the round. And like I said, go ahead and chain two and turn your work. Always turn your work. And now at this point, go ahead and just work back across your row. Place one double crochet into the top of each stitch like so. Like I said, I do want this balaclava to hit me underneath the neck because I do plan on going in and like framing the face with a few extra rows of stitches. So I think I'm only gonna add like three or four. All right, I have four rows of that double crochet all done. And now at this point, I'm just going to throw it on just to make sure that the balaclava is hitting me like at the right spot. You guys know when you wear your glasses for too long and then you try to look without them and you can't see anything? Struggles. All right, so she's actually pretty cute. This is what that ribbed band here at the bottom looks like. And I have those four rows, so they're actually still hitting me right here at my chin, which means I'm going to stop working in the round and now we can start working on actually making like the rounded headpiece. So at this point, I'm actually going to grab a few stitch markers just because it's going to help me show you guys where to place your stitches. I can't talk without my crochet hook, I need this. All right, so I have my two handy dandy stitch markers ready to be placed on the front part of this hat. But at this point, I'm kind of just going to size it up against my face and kind of imagine where I want the edge of my balaclava to stop. So again, this is going to be the part where I leave an open area for me to, you know, not work stitches into. So kind of just pulling it up on my face, I do want it to kind of hit just the very edge of my eyes. But here, kind of just looking at the balaclava on my face, I want it to stop right about there and right about here. So go ahead and pinch those two stitches and count how many that you have open in the middle. Three, four, five, six, seven. So for my face shape, I'm choosing to leave 14 stitches open in the very center of my balaclava. All right, so I just went ahead and added my two little stitch markers here to the very front of my balaclava. So I just made sure to leave 14 stitches untouched in the center. And then on the edges of those stitches, I just went ahead and placed those stitch markers. Alrighty, so at this point, I'm just going to attach my yarn into the stitch with the stitch marker. And from this point, I'm going to work across the very back of the head. And when I get to my other stitch marker, I'm going to work my very last stitch into that stitch marker and then turn my work and work back. So I'm pretty much just working along the back side of my balaclava and I'm just gonna work up a bunch of rows back and forth with plain old double crochet, nothing fancy here, just one stitch into the top of each stitch. So here is that front section of my balaclava. I'm just going to take one of the stitch markers and attach my yarn 
into that stitch and just secure it. Tie a couple knots just to make sure that bad boy ain't going nowhere. So now that my yarn is attached into that stitch, go ahead, chain two like normal as if you're at the very front of your row because you are, and then go ahead and work an actual stitch into that stitch marker. And then from here, I'm just going to be working one double crochet into each and every stitch until I hit that stitch marker. And that will be the end of your row. I'm going to work up roughly 10 to 12 rows and then I can try on the balaclava and see if it's hitting me at the right point. All right, so now I'm approaching that second stitch marker and I'm just going to go ahead, work a double crochet into that stitch marker. And then here's where I can just chain two and turn my work. And now I'm just going to work back across the way that I came, avoiding that front area. All right, y'all, guess what? I have pretty much finished up the majority of this balaclava. And as you guys can see here, this is what the front part is looking like. So like I mentioned earlier, you are going to have that pretty big gap here at the front where your face is going to pop out. And I'm pretty sure I added a total of 11 rows starting from the spot where we put in our stitch markers. So I've got 11 rows. Now's the part where I'm going to throw it on my head to show you guys exactly where this opening is hitting me right above my eyebrow. And then from there, we are going to connect the two panels to each other. So I'm gonna walk you through that right now. But pretty much this is the part where I'm going to pause and throw on some makeup and do my hair because I don't think there's any other way to look cute in a balaclava unless you're completely done up. So let's cue over to getting cute. So really quickly here, I'm just running through my very simple and minimalist beauty routine. And thank you so much to Merit Beauty for gifting me these gorgeous makeup items. So Merit Beauty is actually part of the Clean at Sephora campaign. And I love that they take a holistic approach to clean, making products that are very safe for your skin, your body, and our planet. And I found that what I love most about Merit Beauty is that they're devoted to making eco-friendly beauty products with everything being cruelty-free and vegan, as well as having recyclable packaging and having reusable makeup bags. So thank you so much, Merit Beauty, for gifting me some of your makeup. I mean, come on, y'all. Look at these lip oils. Stunning. These have all become such a huge staple in my everyday makeup routine. All right, so I just finished getting ready. I did my hair. Here I saw me do my makeup. Damn, y'all, do you guys like really see my skin right now? And honestly, this is definitely like a go-to routine for me. Keep it really simple, short, and sweet, and you get a beautiful result like this. And now that we got the cute little beauty routine done and out of the way, let's just go ahead and pop on this bad boy and let's show you guys what I'm working with. See y'all, this is what I was talking about. Like I really need some hair and makeup to pull these things off. All right, but this is what we have so far after 11 rows starting here at that face section. And if you guys can see here, when I hold up the balaclava to my face, this very last 11th row hits right above my eyebrow. And I feel like this is a perfect stopping point. <laughs> I love how I'm just like sitting in this right now. I look absolutely wretched. But at this point, my next step is to pick up where I've left off here after my 11th row. And I need to create a foundation double crochet that stretches from this panel over here and connects to this panel. Create a bunch of foundation double crochets that stretch across my forehead. And then I can connect them here to the other side of our panel. So I've already gone ahead and made two of those foundation double crochet. And at this point you can just continue making foundation double crochets until it's long enough to stretch across your forehead. So let's see how many I make. So to connect it to the other side here, I have 15 foundation double crochets so far. So you know what, I think I'm just going to add two more and then I'm going to connect it to the other side. So I will have a total of 17 foundation half double crochets. Okay, so I've just finished attaching my foundation double crochets to the other panel. All right guys, I promise we are on the final stretch to finish up the top part of this balaclava. So as you guys can see here, my foundation double crochet is across the way. And now I'm actually going to be working rows inside 
back and forth. And that's pretty much all I'm going to do to finish up this balaclava. So I'm just going to place one double crochet into the top of each stitch in my foundation row. And then when you get to the end of your row, go ahead and slip stitch it to your row of double crochet prior. Go ahead, slip stitch two more up this side of your balaclava. And then you guys guessed it, go ahead and work 17 more double crochet back across your row. Go ahead, slip stitch it to this side slip stitch two more times up the side, 17, slip stitch, 17, slip stitch, 17. So we're just working rows back and forth all along this top part of the balaclava. And just another secret tip that I can give to you guys is when you have about two or three rows remaining at the back part of your hat, I am just going to work a couple decreases each row just to shorten up the back of the head. That way it's not super, you know, rectangular in the back, but let's go ahead and work up the first 10 or so rows, and I'll meet you guys back here in a second. Since there is a little bit of a gap right here, I'm just going to pick up the very bottom of the stitch and work a double crochet. And then from there, I can go into the very top of my first stitch in the row and add a regular double crochet. And again, I'm just gonna move down my row of foundation double crochets and place one double crochet on top of each other. But now that we're here at the very end of our row, you guys guessed it, I'm just going to slip stitch into the left side of my panel right there. And then at this point, you can slip stitch one more time and two more times. So we're working our way up the back side of the hat. And now we can go ahead and turn my work. And at this point, you guys guessed it, I'm going to go right back into that very first stitch in the row. And then at this point, you're just gonna to continue to work one stitch into the top of each stitch, working your way across the top of your hat. You guys can see that I have one more stitch right here that I'm going to pick up in the row. And then at this point, again, we need to attach this to the right side of our panel. So to go ahead and do that, I'm actually going to skip one stitch right there and place my hook into the second stitch because the double crochet is a little bit tall. So I wanna make sure that I leave a little bit of a gap there so that there is enough height there to the hat. And again, work two more slip stitches up the side of your panel. Go ahead and turn your work and repeat the process of adding those double crochets. All right, so really quickly, I just wanted to catch you guys up on what I have so far. So right here, I've worked up a total of 10 rows across the top of the hat. And as you guys can see here, I only have probably two or three more rows left to do. It's not too much. So right here on my third to last row, I'm actually adding two double crochet decreases at the very center just because I want my hat to kind of slope off instead of being a little bit more rectangular. So yeah, I thought I would give you guys a quick little pro tip if you wanna add a little bit more shaping to your hat, go ahead and add a couple decreases in the last few rows. All right, so it's kind of hard to show you because it's such a small gap, so I can't really zoom in too much on this, but basically all I'm going to do is slip stitch these stitches to these stitches. So I'm literally just going to be closing up this gap by slip stitching all of my rows, slip stitch this little gap closed to each other, and then I can jump onto the face portion. Damn y'all, I'm such a good singer. Somebody should sign me. I'm totally kidding by the way, in case you guys couldn't tell, I'm kidding. <laughs> if you guys wanna roast me in the comments, that's totally fine. It's acceptable, I feel it, it's allowed. But this is what we're working with so far. So to finish up the rest of the balaclava, like I said, I'm just going to attach my yarn here at the very corner. And I'm honestly just going to go back a few times and probably add like two or three rows of those single crochets all around the edge of the balaclava. I kind of look like an astronaut. So yeah, guys, this is the finished baklava, balaclava, excuse me but I'm loving how it turned out. I'm actually really glad that I used a yarn that had like a lot of color and texture and patterns. And I'm actually dying over this ripped band here at the bottom, but this is our final result. Hello, who is she? But yeah, that's gonna wrap it up 
for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you guys have a happy new year and spend a lot of time and love with friends and loved ones. And yeah, if you guys haven't already subscribed yet, what are you doing? Go do it now. Please subscribe to my channel. Get some more um, balaclava goodness. Yeah, we want more of this, right? Yeah, yeah, we do. All right, I'll see you guys later. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.